Before we gallop on to the rest of the menu, a couple of updates on stories we've been covering. One week ago today, it was U.S. Election Day. Seven days later, they still cannot tell us who won. I checked in on the third congressional district of California, which for days has been stalled on 36 percent of the vote. Good news. They've now picked up the pace and are up to 53 percent of the vote, as you can see here. It's still neck and neck, so at the current rate of counting, we won't know for another week. This is not a system of representative election that should command any respect from the rest of the world. At best, it's incompetent. At worst, it's corrupt. And until they clean up their own house, uh, we should pay no attention to anything the U.S. State Department says about elections in Belarus or Sudan or anywhere else. On the other hand, maybe elections don't matter. Yesterday, we mentioned Boris Johnson's father, Stanley. A uh, familiar face on these airwaves and his casual revelation that under some mysterious, quote, national plan, he referenced, you won't be allowed to get on a plane. Well, uh, they've just been holding the G20 plus the B20, which is apparently the business version of the G20. Do you know who's in the G20? It's uh, Britain, America, Russia, China, France, Canada. Yes, yes, yes. But Klaus Schwab. The sinister Teutonic megalomaniac hiding in plain sight as a sinister Teutonic megalomaniac was also there. So I guess Davos, despite being a small sub-jurisdiction of a Swiss canton, must be a member of the G22 now. So uh, Uber Bergermeister to the planet, Schwab, gave a keynote address to the various presidents and prime ministers laying out his plans for the world. What we have to confront is a deep, systemic and structural restructuring of our world. And this will take some time. And the world will look differently after we have gone through this transition process. Uh -huh. Nice of him to give us a heads up. My problem with Klaus Schwab getting together with all the clever expert types to remake the planet is that the smart set have had the last three years all to themselves and have wrecked everything in sight. We have reported all year on the so-called COVID vaccines and their victims. And the pom-pom girls of the propaganda media have done you no favors by propping up the disintegrating fairy tale. Uh, for all you media big shots still invested in the fairy tale, here's where this story is heading. Headline from the Daily Mail. Pfizer and Moderna launched trials to track whether health issues arise years after getting their COVID vaccines. We've interviewed Vicky Spitt and Charlotte Wright, whose husbands died days after getting their jabs. But we've also interviewed doctors who've explained that the damage done can do long-term heart damage that might not kill you for five or ten years. And Pfizer and Moderna are now acknowledging that possibility by conducting these trials. Two years late, you might say. But those bodies, uh, Facebook, full fact, Ofcom, still clinging to the official narrative like Monica Lewinsky hanging off Bill Clinton's zipper, are trying to prop up something that is no longer prop upable. Yesterday, John Watt was on this show. He's been crippled by the Pfizer, then been further injured by the ghastly groupthink of Britain's awful monomedia. And in the course of his appearance, he made a throwaway aside about the attitude to the jab crippled by a couple of our pal Dan Wooden's guests, one of whom wasn't happy about it. Tweet from the iPapers, Benjamin Butterworth. Do you really think it is acceptable or professional to let a guest throw nasty playground insults and not take them up on it, Mark Stein? Mr. Butterworth warned to his theme, he let a guest call me a bleep hole. This is not a serious discussion. Mark Stein is pathetic. I'm not sure that bleephole charge is uh, strictly true, but feel free to make an Ofcom complaint about it. Here's the point, since you just demonstrated it so brilliantly. Do you really think it is, quote, acceptable or professional or even seemly to take an interview with a bloke who's been crippled by this bloody jab and make it all about you? Even by the standards of British media narcissism, that seems unusually self-absorbed. And yet you thinking it's all about you really explains where so much of this has gone horribly wrong. You and he were both healthy young men who had no particular need of this medical intervention, but you were told by everyone 
from the Queen down to do the right thing, so you both did. And so far it's working out for you, which is grand, and I hope it keeps working out for you, but it's not working out for poor old John Watt. His recurring symptoms include nausea, severe acid reflux, stomach pain, diarrhea, fatigue, weight loss, dizziness, tachycardia on standing, high blood pressure, slurred speech, brain fog, seizures, jolts, head pressure, chest pain, vertigo, blackouts, breathlessness, chest pain, heart palpitations. I could go on and on. We're about two-thirds of the way through that list of symptoms. And your attitude, the attitude of the groupthink media to your fellow citizens killed and crippled by irresponsible and actually criminally negligent public policy is creepy and heartless. What you do need to do is just admit you called it wrong and recognize John and Vicky and Charlotte and all the rest as fellow members of the British family rather than apostates at odds with your weird and creepy neo-religion of the Pfizer. Mr. Butterworth is welcome on this show, although I know Dan guards his regulars very zealously. Last week, we sent the Mark Stein Show cameras round to the Atrium Hotel at Heathrow, where thousands of young male, quote, asylum seekers are holed up at taxpayer expense. Some came by boat, some came by lorry, some came by plane. But the migrant tide is accelerating. 2,000 more young men arrived on the southern shore just in the last 72 hours. That works out about a quarter million a year or about the equivalent of Newcastle or uh, Londonderry. I mention the latter because after all these years, it might be fun to add a new wrinkle to the Irish question and move in the next 12 months intake of fit young lads to make the official recitation of the city's name even more cumbersome. Derry slash London Derry slash Allahu Akbari. But what's happening at that Heathrow Hotel is going on all over the country.